everyone. In today's video, I'm just going to be going through how you might go about choosing a graph and then constructing a graph also. And in this video, I'll just be talking through bar charts, histograms and scattergrams. So the first type of graph I'm going to be looking through is a bar chart. So when do you actually use a bar chart? You use this type of graph when the data you're provided with is discrete and categorical. And when your data is drawn, it's important to remember that the bars are separated. So now I'm just going to talk about how you might want to go about constructing a bar chart and several elements you need to make sure you include. So first of all, you need to make sure you provide a clear title. So you won't always be given a line to indicate that you need a title, but it's one of them things you just need to remember to include as it's easy marks that people may tend to miss. You also need to make sure you've clearly labelled your axes. These also need to be completely operationalised. So for example, if one of your labels is time, you need to indicate the units of time which this was measured in. For example, seconds or minutes. You also need to make sure that each bar is labelled, just to make it clear what each bar is actually representing. You should also try and ensure that the numbers going along your y-axis go up in equal intervals. So for example, you go 5, 10, 15 as opposed to going 5, 10, 20. It needs to be equal each time. And again, I've just reiterated about the fact that the bars should not be touching. Next, we have scattergrams. So when do you actually use a scattergram? A scattergram is used to show correlational data. You also use a scattergram when both axes are going to be made up of numbers. So there's no categories here. When you plot your data, you'll find it either shows you a positive, negative or no correlation. So how would you go about constructing a scattergram? Many of the points do cross over from a bar chart, but of course it is plotted slightly differently. So you again need to make sure you have your clear title. You need to make sure that there's clear equal intervals between each set of data. And you also need to make sure you've labelled your axes, including any units. So this just makes sure they're completely operationalised. So I've also just noted here about some key points to remember. So you need to ensure your points are all plotted correctly. You only need to draw a line of best fit if you're asked to do so within the question, otherwise this more becomes a line graph. And then you need to try and make sure to remember to draw your graph in pencil, as well as using a ruler. This ensure it looks neat and you can rub out anything if it goes wrong. Next, we've got histograms. And personally, out of the three, I'd say histograms are the hardest. So when do you actually use a histogram? You use them when there is a presence of continuous data, for example, height, weight or time. When you come to plot the data for a histogram, you cannot just plot the frequency as the bars. Instead, you need to work out the frequency density for each bar. In order to calculate the frequency density, you need to get the class width and divide that by the frequency. So the calculations you can see on screen for this example are very, very easy because the class width is always 5 cm. However, you will find that this isn't always the case. You may have 5 cm for the first one and then it could jump to 15 cm. But that's absolutely fine. You're not doing anything wrong if you come across that. This will just mean that the width of the bars on your bar chart are instead different sizes. For example, on the histogram shown on screen, you'll see that the majority of the bars are across a 10 cm width. However, the second bar only spans across 5 cm. And so this would have just reflected the different class widths shown within the original table. You will also see along the side that the axis is labelled frequency density. And this just makes it completely clear that what you've constructed is a histogram and that the bars do not represent the frequency. When it comes to histograms, I'm not actually sure of the type of question AQA might like to ask. We've seen one question in the past where you were just asked to explain why a histogram was not appropriate and that was fine because for that you just have to point out that the data probably wasn't continuous. I'm not sure if AQA would want to ask you to construct a histogram just because they are quite time consuming to do because you do have to work out that frequency density before you can do anything else. However, I would never rule it out completely because it could always come up and be worth perhaps a few more marks or whatever. So just make sure you are clear on how you would go about calculating the frequency density and then make sure you remember 
that the bars on your chart have to be according to the class width as opposed to just being the same size. They could perhaps also present you with a histogram already drawn and then ask you to work out the frequency. And to do this, you simply take the class width and times this by the frequency density. So looking at the histogram in the bottom of the screen, the first bar has a class width of 10 and a frequency density of 0.2. You times these together to get a frequency of 2. The second bar has a class width of 5 and then a frequency density of 1.4. You times these together to get a frequency of 7. Here I've just put about some of the questions you could perhaps see within the exam. So for example, you could be given a set of data and asked to justify what type of graph to use and why. And for this, you just look at factors such as whether the data is continuous or discrete. You may also be given data and asked to plot a graph. For this, you just need to make sure you include all of the elements we've looked at in this video, just to make sure you get full marks. And of course, as I said with histograms, there may be some cases where they ask you to work backwards. I hope this video was somewhat useful in showing you the different types of graphs you may be asked about within the exam. As always, if you have any questions, just leave them down below.